Our gospel for the summer is going to be this uh, pair of verses from the end of Luke's gospel, the, a gospel reading from the 24th chapter of Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. you are witnesses of these things, said Jesus, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated, and my reader helpers, you are welcome to come on up. As we are going to now have the Acts 2 reading of the Pentecost story. A reading from Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were a devout Jews from every people under heaven, living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya that belong to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? They are filled with new wine. But Peter standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Judeans and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's greatness and glorious days. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you, my friends in faith. Have you ever gone to church and everybody in church was so excited that you assumed that they were all drunk? (laughs) At nine in the morning? It's amazing that that's the only logical explanation that could come out of this mass confusion of this Pentecost moment that we just heard at the beginning of Acts. So a little background, Pentecost is actually a Jewish festival called Shabbat, and it happened 50 days after the harvest is celebrated during the Passover. This was a first fruits harvest that would have brought visitors to Jerusalem uh, who would have been there on pilgrimage. And so this festival was uh, not just a first fruits, but it was also connected to the giving of the law to Moses in Mount Sinai. So there's a lot of historical significance to this. And it was called Pentecost before we called it Pentecost. It's been, a, it's been around for a really long time, and it's a really big deal. 
Yet when those visitors showed up to the holy city, I can't imagine that any of the travelers from that day would have anticipated what happened next. As people from all over the world, look at how far they would have been making this, pil uh, this pilgrimage. Uh, the Parthians from the east and the visitors from Rome, their language, their culture, their customs, they would have all been different and unique to each of those groups that arrived in Jerusalem. And they are all about to witness an event that they will take home with them. They will tell everybody about what happened. And you can already envision how like those paths back to those homes involved seeing people on the road and telling them all about what had happened and being amazed at this incredible event that has just happened. Of course, the disciples are still in shock from the ascension, which happened 10 days ago. And they were waiting on important instructions, which is why those verses that we are going to read from the gospel, Jesus is telling them, you're going to be the witnesses of this. Now stay in the city. And he doesn't tell them how long, but 10 days, stay in the city, and then you'll be clothed with power from on high. And that's what happens on the 50th day. 50th day after Easter is Pentecost. That's why we're celebrating that. So what are the disciples' witnesses of? Well, they're certainly witnesses to the post-resurrection appearance of Jesus, They'll be witnesses to the ascension, but they've also been witnesses to the ways that Jesus has opened up the scriptures and how he is the fulfillment of the law of Moses. And so how cool is it that that parallels so well with why everyone's coming to Jerusalem in the first place? To celebrate the law of Moses. And Jesus is going to have a surprise for everyone when he says, hey, stay here for, uh, for further instructions, because none of them had any idea what this Pentecost was moment was going to be like. This new Pentecost moment, when the Holy Spirit arrives and the leaders of the church now have this confidence to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to go out into the world. And as you saw on that map, like that will start to spread everywhere as they get empowered to go out into this world. I do love the comment from the crowd, though, that in the midst of this confusion, everyone must be drunk. Like how chaotic and surreal it must have been for them as they gathered and they knew that, like, they've, they've done these pilgrimages before, and they know that they don't understand everybody. But then, all of a sudden, they start talking, and they start hearing what Peter has to say. Now, we have the benefit of the full story as it's written down. But what would have happened if, and how would you have felt if you were right in the midst of that, in that confusion and that chaos and all this weird things that you didn't think you'd be able to understand all of a sudden being, being able to uh, be able to understand people that you couldn't hear before. It had to be a bit unsettling. Uh, author Margaret Atwood says, when you are in the middle of a story, it isn't a story at all, but only a confusion, a dark roaring, a blindness, a wreckage of shattered glass and splintered wood. It's like a house in a whirlwind, or a boat crushed by the icebergs or swept over the rapids, and all aboard are powerless to stop it. It's only afterwards that it becomes anything like a story at all, when you are telling it to yourself or to someone else. How grateful then are we to Luke, who is also the writer of the Gospel of Luke, who then writes this story as it's told in the book of Acts, as he helps us to see how this plays out. On this moment of Pentecost, they are stuck right in the middle of the story. And there's a lot of confusion going on. And we get to see how that unsettling and powerful nature of the Holy Spirit, which arrives like a violent wind, is actually the same spirit that guides us here in this congregation, in this sanctuary today. Now, I haven't witnessed y'all in such a stupor that I would pre uh, presume all of you to be drunk. You seem pretty well put together today. But I have seen us as a congregation live out this mission statement, led by the Spirit to share God's grace. And then to know that we are the body of Christ, which means we welcome all, we're inspired by God, and we are sent out to live our faith. When the call goes out, faith responds. When we were told, hey, can you guys bring in some candles to help the unsheltered? You, got, you guys responded with such amazing uh, fervor and energy. Anytime we ask for snacks to help feed the children or food to be able to help our uh, neighbors in the community or the plants to be able to grow, to be able to help that harvest to feed our neighbors or creating artwork that expresses our faith. There are so many ways where I see that call get sent out and that response is, is met with so much energy. 
We, we encourage an interactive faith, one that witnesses the authentic uh, prayer on a football field to one that sees God's presence in the middle of the wilderness of the Boundary Waters. Uh, here's three of our current graduates were in this picture from a couple of years ago, uh, including uh, Vanessa. This is Vanessa in the, in the ground over there. She had the good fortune of falling backwards uh, in the middle of bottle portage. So yeah, I'm in the canoe, and that's Vanessa on the ground. That's not a turtle, that's Vanessa. You might remember Vanessa more from uh, the word on the street, uh, but you think about all of the ways that these youth have made such an impact on us. Uh, that canoe trip was really unique because that was in 2021 when, you know, let's think back, like 2020 and 2021, those were kind of different times, weren't they? Uh, this group had one of the most unique confirmation experiences ever uh, because a lot of their experience was kind of in, in this bubble. Uh, and this trip was actually a great way because we were able to be our own self-contained unit. So the masks were off and we were all able to be uh, together. It actually kind of gave us in the midst of a turbulent time within the world to have some hope and be like, oh yeah, remember when things were normal and to know that things would become normal again. I think of the words of Margaret Atwood, who's, who has you know, that word about story, and it was an interesting way for us to kind of reflect on COVID time, because in the middle of that story and the confusion and the, the darkness, it felt like we were always in the mud. And so afterwards, now we can look back and we write the story about the way that we tell it. It's a time now, I think, for our faith to be able to understand where are we going, Let's talk about that over this summer. As we look at the book of Acts each week, we're going to see this story build and build and build upon each other. We're going to read through the book of Acts uh, with a few verses or a story or maybe a couple of chapters at a time and be able to understand what was going on. What was going on in that early church? And our lens is going to be a formula that's going to be pretty similar most weeks. Because first, we're going to look at the past. We're going to talk about what challenges did the new believers go through. So we're going to talk about the what but then we're going to ask the so what. What, what now? You know, why does it matter what they did? Why did it matter that they made the decisions that they did? And how did those decisions affect the early Christian church? And then we're going to think about the now what. Okay, so finally we're going to reflect on what are we doing here today? Not just the early church, but what about us? What is the future at faith all about? And so today, we are here gathered in this moment, and there's not darkness or confusion. We're, we are making decisions while in a good place. We are able to do this because this is a good time to be thoughtful. As a congregation, we have given some space for the Holy Spirit to help answer a lot of questions about where we want to go. Where, where Spirit, are you leading us as a church? We have a congregational meeting in a little bit where we're going to Talk about updating our Constitution, which is no small feat, is it, when you have to think about how we are coordinating and synthesizing changes so that our congregation will continue to, to be in good uh, governance. We're going to be voting on our organ repair uh, in a way that makes some sense, and it's going to improve the sound of the pedals. It's going to be able to help us know that this organ will be able to last for generations to come. And then we're going to vote on our solar panels and whether or not we want to go forward with a plan that's going to help uh, with the future in mind and some future saving benefits for the next generations. And all of these together, you know, individually might not quite make sense, but collectively, it's all about the so what. Like the challenges and fears from the, from the COVID era, you know, we emerged from that. And the congregation was able to support each other through that. And we always had a long-term approach with the decision-making process. We didn't rush decisions, but there was thoughtfulness applied. We thought about ways of taking care of each other. And today's another one of those days where this decision hasn't been rushed. When it wasn't clear, you know, what was the best possible solution for the organ, we ended up delaying the vote a few weeks because we wanted the best information possible. And that's why today is why we're gathering. We now have the bid that we think is the best one to be able to bring forward to say this is what will accomplish those goals. The work of all three of these things that we're voting on have been in motion for, for a long time, some of them up to a year, if not longer. And we don't know as a congregation what the future holds, but given the information that we have and the processes that we have followed, each of these three items is going to help impact future generations at faith. So one last note to really let us uh, kind of think about this, because we've also had that opportunity to say 
uh, congratulations to our graduates today. And I, I'm sure a lot of us are probably going to be going to grad parties, if, if we haven't already, uh, over the next weeks uh, and months ahead. One of the ways that we uh, thank our graduates is to be able to, to celebrate them and the accomplishments that we've made. But we also are excited for what's about to, to happen into their future. We bless them on their new adventures. Some will involve school, some will involve work, some will involve travels. You know, the, the future's wide open. We don't know what they will become. Yet we are filled with hope because we see that hope that is in their eyes. What an inspirational group of young leaders we've had here at Faith. They are not the future of the church. They are the church. They have been the church. They are the ones who have taught us so much. And they will continue to help us to grow as a church as we look to their leadership and their guidance. Thanks be to God for our youth and our young adults. Because we are the church faith. We are. And the story continues to unfold and so whatever decisions we do make, we know that we're doing it through prayerful and thoughtful decision-making and that we aren't doing this alone because the Holy Spirit is with us, leading us forward to share God's grace. Amen.